Hello, I'm Paul Richards with the latest from science. New research suggests bald men are at a higher risk of suffering from severe COVID-19 symptoms. And in general, men are at a greater risk than women of contracting the disease. It's a pretty small study, but worth chatting more about. To do that, I'm joined by Academy Fellow and biochemical geneticist, Professor Jenny Graves from La Trobe University. Hi, Jenny. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be there. Now, can you tell us um, what is the link between COVID-19 and baldness? Well, it was a big surprise and it was first discovered by a couple of dermatologists who were interested in baldness and they found that in a small number of cases in Spain that most of the men who were seriously ill or, or dying with COVID were bald. Uh, something like 79% of men. And that's way more than the average number of bald men in the community. So they thought, well, there must be something going on here. And that's really how it started. At the moment, uh, there's a lot of research going on, but normal peer review processes are you know, delayed. Um, what size was this study and how reliable is the information? Uh, well, the first study was, I think, 122 men, and the second study was also small, um, but the, the results were so startling that uh, I think a lot of people took notice, and I believe there are more bigger studies going on that are probably better controlled for age and sex and that sort of thing. Right, so okay. it does seem to be a real thing, and it seems to be not just Spain, but all over the place. Fascinating. And the other uh, bit of research that's been going on is looking at the difference between men and women. And, and men in general seem to be uh, more susceptible to COVID-19. Can you explain why? Yes, that uh, came out very quickly. It looked like all over the world, you know, in China and also in New York, uh, it was more like 61 or 62 percent of uh, people seriously ill and hospitalised with COVID-19 were men. It does seem like being a male is a risk factor and being a bald man is particularly a risk factor. So where do we go next with this sort of information? Obviously, it needs to be uh, further verified and looked into, but could it be useful in developing treatments? Well, very useful. And of course, um, uh, people want to know, well, why? What's baldness got to do with being sick with a virus? Uh, but we already knew that baldness is is uh, really um, a product of hyperandrogen. So a lot of the male hormone androgen uh, is linked very strongly to baldness. And so it looks like having a lot of the male hormone is a risk factor. And that actually does make a certain amount of sense because we know that the uh, androgens bind to the cell um, in the androgen receptor and the androgen receptor binding triggers another uh, protein on the surface of the cell to take a chop out of the virus spike protein and that's required for the virus spike protein to actually get into the cell. So there is a perfectly sensible link. Uh, so that looks scientifically reasonably good. Um, and the studies are now looking to see whether uh, people who have been treated for other reasons with anti-androgens are much less susceptible. And um, in fact, it's quite common to treat people with anti-androgens, particularly uh, men with prostate cancer, are very frequently uh, treated with, uh, with um, androgen uh, deficiency treatment. Uh, and so there was quite a big study done in Italy looking at uh, prostate cancer uh, patients, some of whom had been treated and others who hadn't, and it looked like the treated cohort was much less susceptible to serious disease. And so I know those trials are being replicated in the United States now. And can you tell me, is baldness uh, linked to any other uh, susceptibility to other health conditions or diseases? Not to my knowledge. I mean, there are many, many other diseases uh, linked to androgen, either um, too much or too little androgen will give you all kinds of, of problems. Um, benign prostate enlargement is linked to too much androgen, and that's why you use an androgen deficiency therapy. Uh, but there's some women who have a lot of androgens too, women with polycystic ovary disease. Uh, and then there are 
people who have too little androgen and they have other conditions as well. So uh, the androgen is linked to a, a number of diseases, not so much baldness. Jenny, can you tell me, uh, are there any other uh, genetic factors that are being investigated that could help us to better understand who's more susceptible to COVID-19? Well, there are a lot of very big studies done now looking at what is called the whole genome. So looking for associations between being becoming very sick with the virus and particular uh, genetic variants. So you're looking at variants all over the genome and they found that there seem to be two spots in the genome particularly associated with becoming very sick with COVID-19. Uh, one is a, a spot we know which um, contains genes that code for the ABO blood groups. And these, again, are receptors, they're proteins on the surface of cells. And so, again, they might interfere with the virus getting in. But the other patch is a, a patch of six or seven genes on chromosome three. And we don't actually know quite what they do, but there's at least one of those genes has something to do with the ACE2 receptor. So it may be, again, that it will interfere or um, exacerbate the binding of the virus to the cell and the virus getting in the cell. But there may be a lot more little places around the genome that have genes that either uh, make you more susceptible or make you more resistant. And that wouldn't be at all surprising. For instance, with the AIDS virus, it looks like there's probably 50 genes that contribute in some way or another in making you either more resistant or more susceptible. And, and so that's very common for all diseases. What about the way that uh, male and female immune systems work? Uh, do they react differently? And, you know, for instance, uh, is something like the man flu real? <laughs> Uh, well, it, it seems to be a very general observation that uh, that women have a, a stronger immune system than men. And that's not just the COVID-19 virus. Uh, that's all sorts of different viruses and bacteria and other pathogens as well. So women seem to be have a tougher immune response. And we don't quite know why, but it seems like Two X chromosomes is better than one when it comes to the immune system. The X chromosome has at least 60 re immune response genes on it. And having two copies of it means that you've got actually um, not just double the amount of it, but slightly different versions. And that's really good for the immune system because that means they can the immune system can recognize a wider variety of, of proteins uh, in pathogens that are infected. So it does look like uh, females have a tougher immune system than males. That's not all good because uh, women suffer more from autoimmune diseases, which is when the, the immune system turns on itself. So it's a, it's a delicate balance. You want just the right amount. So Jenny, uh, is this why it's important to study the disease and its effects on both sexes? Yes, very much so. In fact, all diseases, because uh, uh, men and women are biologically very different. Genetically, they're very different. Physiologically, they're very different. Women are not just small men. And there are a lot of diseases which uh, are much more serious in one sex than the other. Uh, you know, diseases like Parkinson's is, is mainly males. Diseases like ours disease is mainly females. We don't quite know why. Uh, also, some treatments work well in women, but not in men. And other treatments work, work well in men, but not in women. For instance, aspirin uh, is very effective for, for heart disease in men, but for stroke in women. So you really need to know this before you uh, go into diagnosis or treatment. Well, thank you very much for all the work that you're doing on, on this front and uh, for joining us today. You're very welcome, Paul. We publish new episodes of the latest from science regularly on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us for the latest videos on Facebook. Just search for the Australian Academy of Science. I'm Paul Richards. See you soon.